Hello, well, everybody. Do we need to start everyone like that? What are I we don't doing know. today? Are we doing a podcast? Are we doing a top 10, top 20? Yes, yes. A trip down memory lane? I had a couple things that I was thinking about as I was driving this morning, so maybe we could start with those and kind of go from there. Okay. You know, last night I got back to the office and you made the comment that we had won the first round of that, of the Jandy Facebook competition thing. And I got to thinking, because as you know, I've struggled all along. I've got, I've, I'm in no loss for words in general. I can talk a lot. But I've been in, all along, had the struggle with trying to explain to people who we really are and what our company is and what differentiates us. Well, as I was driving today, I was thinking about that because having like won the first round and, you know, it's cool, it's fun. It's not like it's... It changes anything, but it's cool. It's all you know, in it, fun. It's just all in fun, and, yeah. and it's all about building good product for good people everywhere and every company. There's not like I want to win against a company because it's not that at all. It's about just how can I be better and how can our company be better. But it got me thinking about the differentiations. Earlier today I was thinking about we had just done one of the last few top five things why was the top five things why people should hire us or you know what makes us different and all of those things are really good everything that we said there and we probably said ten things when we called it five as to why someone it would be a good idea to hire us but I was trying to think beyond that because there's something beyond that and you know I talked about the layers of how we view things I think that's really important but there's a detail part and I think a picture doesn't say it. a picture is this broadcast of a general idea of what two things look like and then you try to compare them and say what's better well one's better on a technical standpoint one's better on aesthetic standpoint one's got more emotional involved one there's a lot of reasons as to why doing that and comparing pictures is difficult but what I was thinking was I don't know that I've ever met in my pool history in all of the people that I've met all of the top guys in the industry doing stuff no one ever talked about nor did nor honed in on no one ever did or talked about level of detail I was trying to reflect back into all of the amazing pool projects that I've seen and all the amazing people that I've met in the industry, the top guys in the industry, whether I took classes with them, whether I met them personally, all of that. I don't think that there's another builder that builds to the level of detail. What do you mean by level of detail? Okay. So, technical detail versus aesthetic detail. I think there's a difference. There's builders out there that are amazingly technical builders. There are people that can build a 360 degree wetted edge pool with perfect precision so that the water wets the whole thing with middle amount of water. I mean there's there's that type of detail. That's not what I'm talking about because that's not how I build. You would not want me to build a 360 degree wetted detail unless it could be super uber creative which those are not they're aesthetically pretty but there's a really narrow view of what they are and once you've seen that there's nothing left you can go around and look at how square the tile is and how whatever and how precise the angles are but that's not what I'm talking about what I'm talking about is consciously going into a project with the visual immersion how when there there's those continual discoveries and things running it way down to the finest details meaning the smallest detail like what? what's there I'm still I'm, you're still struggling with it well okay. I'm still struggling okay. with how people will understand I, what you're trying well to say. I, I don't know why how people will understand it but what I have seen in everything there is in a project not a single project that I've ever visited, not a single project that I've witnessed online, in video, in whatever, short of the stuff that we've been involved with specifically. 
that has the full immersion detail. So let's let's go to uh, how we feel about something. We walk into a yard and we go, oh, this is pretty. Layer number one is this is pretty or not pretty. You, you kind of make a judgment call when you first see it. You like it, you don't like it. Because some people really want a straight line, rectangle, whatever. Some people don't. And, you know, so you go to that. And then after you've, you've made a blank judgment when you see something, if you stay around it long enough, now in photographs you make a blank judgment based on a two-dimensional object. But let's say, for example, you're walking into two different yards. And this one appeals to you, this one does not. For whatever reason, aesthetic value. You make a really quick judgment, bam, immediately, right there. And you're less likely to go any deeper into this one that you didn't like as much. But you're more likely to be drawn into this one because it something triggers in your brain and you automatically like it. It's somehow just, I don't know, it seems different. That's where immersion starts. Visualization, when you first see something, sort of gives you a, a, a palette of judgment. We judge things based on a snap, what we see, what we thin slice it, and we quickly make decisions on stuff, which is good when it comes to fight or flight and survival. It isn't necessarily good, though, when it comes to decision making. Other than fight or flight, and whether it's a survival thing, yes, thin slice. But when we meet people, we quickly thin slice and decide whether we like them or not, and I realize that. But let's talk pool specific. We see two pools, one appeals to us, one less appeals to us less, we are attracted to the one that appeals to us. Once you get past that appeal point, that, ooh, this is pretty, or ooh, this is nice, or ooh, I like this, you, know, you get all those little fuzzy words, then, then the immersion happens. You haven't crossed the immersion until you have this liking for something. And you step into it, and, and that's where I'm talking about things change, is that most construction that I've seen witnessed in the pool industry either has a, a blanket motif that from a distance, your, your, your corridor of viewing is from a distance, so it looks good or it doesn't. But very few are immersive, where once you're there, there's something to the right and there's something to the left and there's something in front of you and there's something above you and something below that keeps attracting your attention. So you're saying something. Is this a waterfall? Is it a well, lounge chair? Is it, it a kitchen? Yes. It what, is, it is what yes. is it? it? It is anything and everything that you could imagine with respect to what that project was supposed to be. For example. So for example, we built a pool that had a general theme of under the sea Spongebob. So it wasn't about building, you know, Spongebob and Patrick and Mr. Krabs and whatever. It was not about that at all, but it was within that genre. And so that genre to me would be under the sea, beach, Caribbean. We can add a lot of different flavors to that. Uh, maroon down an island, uh, you know, whatever it is, and then add to that a cartoon. And we could have gone in there and done handle the land the way anyone else would typically handle land. Build retaining walls, build a pool, done. Instead of using the terrain to create the space that we wanted and being able to, if you remember that project, it's immersive from the moment you step through whatever gate you step through. So coming from the house, there's a gate that goes into this whole expanse area. And as soon as you step into that gate, you're immersed into this wall, wharf wall of visually interesting stuff so there's there's in spongebob if you watch spongebob he he struggles with driving a boat and he can't pass the course to drive a boat so he's always crashing the boat well here's this boat crashed into a wall which is part of a retaining wall which under normal design circumstances would have been a block wall in stone or boulders or you know pre-cast stone set together to, to build up the grade or in our case, it was this immersive, this initial immersive experience into subtly, but into SpongeBob. You know, there was there was a light post with a sign that said Bikini Bottom on it. There was a uh, underneath it was a uh, an authentic, very old road sign that had a curve going this way, and if you paid attention to the detail, the boat was going that way. 
So there's this subtle, you know, SpongeBob was, would be notoriously supposed to go that way and would go that way and crash. So here's the ass end of a boat sticking out with a motor stuck into this hill, which, which becomes this wharf wall of just cool, eclectic, nautical type of stuff. You walk through that and now you're immersing yourself into something different. Again, you could go say pretty wall, or you could immerse yourself into, wow, there's this feeling emotion, really cool old metal that we used for the wharf wall, like you would see in a lot of old wharfs, that corrugated metal that had a good patina to it, and just stuff that you would see, a seagull and a, you know these cool light fixtures and, and everything and anything nautical. So you kind of immersed, you're immersed in it now. The idea was the moment you step through, you're immersed. If you went from the, there's a, a garage slash guest house, if you went in that gate there, you're immediately immersed into this sign on an angle that says Bikini Bottom with the, with the uh, um, life, life preserver that has the name on it. And you start to feel immediately those things. And then there's a bar on this side that has all had that motif. So it's, it's that idea of how do you immerse yourself and how can you draw a customer into something. Now most people the first time, they don't catch most of this. That's the beauty of it. And that's the difference. The first walk through, you don't see the detail. You see, the, the, you see a blank canvas with some, some color on it and a few little interesting things. But the more time you spend there, much like the more time you spend staring at a masterpiece, all of a sudden you see the details of what someone had done and they added all those fine details that your brain misses the first time around, misses it the second time around, misses it the third time around, but who knows how many times later you go, wow, when did that get added into that painting? Well, it was there all along, but your brain just couldn't process it. And that's the thing that I'm talking about. That's the difference. Is The difference is my intention, especially in a themed yard. A little more difficult to do if we're building a, a, a interesting and cool pool, but without a full fledged theme to it, it's a little harder to pull off, but when we're, we're theming within a genre of something, it's how can I keep you visually engaged and interested all the way. The goal is still to get you to go swimming. The goal is still about splashing and playing in the pool with your friends and family and having a good time, but when you're not in that pool, or even when you're in that pool looking at the surround of what's there, it could be a waterfall and a grotto over here that you swim in and there's cool stuff in there, or it could be... You know, it could be playing on the sun shelf and splashing around, but that's not the attraction. The attraction is, that's an activity you get to do, but I want to immerse your brain in the other stuff. I want you to feel a certain way so you remember the moment. Because if we just go, oh, that was fun, it's kind of here and there. But if we kind of allow people to bookmark spots in their life. So I was playing on this sun shelf while looking at this really cool environment when I was doing this thing with my child. Now all of a sudden you've attached these things to it. And that has become a very important part of design and how we use grade and use space and use elevations and use all of those things to make what we do immersive. And there's a lot of really good builders out there that do stuff like that where they, you know, they're using grades in a creative way, but most of them are technically creative way or engineered creative way, not aesthetic creative way. And there's the most, most of the really amazing, award-winning, slash, just top-notch, top-of-the-line, top-end builders are technical builders. Where they're building things for an engineered aesthetic. That yes, this massive wall hanging off the side of a hill actually stays there in the pool. Which, that's, that's cool. But that's the, that's the coolness about it, not the how someone feels about it. Those pools might be pretty to look at, but they're not attracting, typically, someone to go, let's play, let's really let go. There, let's reflect on how beautiful this the landscape is versus how can I enjoy it. So there's that technical part that our industry focuses on. I've, on, I've only been at this 30 years, I haven't been around forever, but. 30 years of my history in studying and watching builders has always been on the technical side. The technical building side, as far as I'm concerned, can, can kind of go over there, and that's fine. I'm, I'm not an engineer, and I couldn't engineer exactly how to do certain things, and I wouldn't express and pretend like I do. I'm a, 
practical guy. I'm a practical physics guy. That was my background. So I understand the basics of how things work. But my concern is how can I make them immersive? How can I make them draw you in and you get fully engaged in the experience of what you're doing? Not in looking at the technical feat that it took. Because you know what? It takes a lot to describe to someone the technical feat of, well, I used you know, 8 million cubic yards of something to make this stand up and you know, kind of nobody cares. But they really care about the aesthetic. They just don't know that they can have that immersion. And as I was driving today, I was thinking about that, thinking, we are probably one of a few, if not the only builders that builds that way. Thoughts? You know, uh, th does any of it make sense? I would agree. As you were talking, I was thinking that I should put a microphone on you, and I would like you to read each of the articles that we put in Aqua Magazine, and then I would like us to read our certain way book so that people could listen to it on the audio. Well, it's, it, it, it is interesting. We have put into newsprint, we have put on the paper, a lot of this way that people just don't get. They don't understand it. They don't know that they're supposed to. You, we can't blame a consumer for sure because they've been educated and taught to talk price, to talk timing, to talk, you know, I mean, really they, they don't know that they don't have to think that way. The right ones do though. I know, I know, and that's the people that are and living in that style of life versus lifestyle living. An example, I think, of how we can recognize when people understand it is like when one of our equipment manufacturers that have been to our jobs try to explain the pool that has a boat on the edge of it to someone to someone if they start to tell somebody about our pool I've heard they mention that there's a boat on the side of the pool and if the next question out of the person's mouth is well, does it float then they're like, ah, forget it, you're not going to get it anyway. And they move on because they know that they couldn't explain mm -hmm. what this is if somebody can only see in that kind of black and white, mm -hmm. what was sort of way. Well, and I think that's, that's our continual challenge on how to tell that story. You have for a me. challenge. You have a way with words that creates a dream in people's minds. And they, because they are not... The pool builder, they don't have to fully understand it. It's like going to a heart surgeon. If a heart surgeon is going to perform surgery, they are not going to explain to you the ins and outs of how this is going to go. They're going to build you the dream of what it's going to look like when you're finished. And the rest of those details... So do you? would you say that the average heart-needing person would run around in inventory who's available and what they're going to charge to do for the task they're going to do. See, they're, they're, it, you can make that argument, but it's not the same thing. I would like because to know. you inherently trust okay. that. Where where are we going with that? Oh, I'm just I'm just wondering how how we can turn this into not a challenge of how to tell the story, because we still haven't put into words how we operate and how we do what we do. We have. We put it in a book. We put it on video. We put it online. Okay. Someday in the future, perhaps long after we're gone, there may be Invented. a definition of a genre that was created as a result of the okay. way that we did things. Where to next? on this journey bus. I've I, heard the term journey bus once upon a time. I, I brought what I brought. What does journey bus refer to? Just this life experience. If one steps onto a bus and sort of has to go where that bus goes because they decided to step on that bus, that's the journey. Now they can choose to jump off that bus at any point how many people do? I don't know. So this is a journey bus that you and I have each stepped on that we could independently or together at any given moment jump off and try to find another bus station and another bus. 
So okay. that journey is something that you get onto a pathway by stepping onto something that you kind of let go of control for a while. When you're on a bus, you don't control it short of screaming and going crazy to try to get something to change. You sort of step on that bus and let it happen until the door opens and you can get off or not. And that's what the, that's what the, the journey on the bus is all about is making a decision and then you step on and you kind of have to let go for a little while and let someone else do something and then you can make an educated decision to get off the bus, get on another bus or stay on the bus or you know hit the bus driver in their head and take over the reins. I don't know, whatever it is, but in that moment there's a point where you let go and let someone else kind of keep it moving for a while. And that's a pretty good description of life. As right. much as all of us love to have every moment in control of our own self, oftentimes we don't. And that's not a bad thing. But we have to we have to be smart enough to understand to make an educated decision whether to stay on that journey and move to another one, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in business decisions, whether it's in just general life stuff, raising children, all of that. There's sometimes you can control things and sometimes you can't. Do you get off the bus and get on another one? Depends on your circumstance. So that's life's bus journey, getting on the journey of life. And I think people often think, and the gurus, oh, you're always in control or you always want to be in control. And I don't think you can. I think what, what I know what I found in my life is that there's times where I can't control every moment of everything. I can't control the fact that there's 12 inches of snow on the ground right now that I can't do the building thing that I consciously want to do. Now, I could get off of this off of this bus, which is being controlled by weather and whatever, and I could move 800 miles south of us and then build tomorrow, but I would have to get off of this life's journey bus and get onto that bus and go 800 miles and then build somewhere else. So I think that's part of the letting go is we can say we're in control, but we're we're in control with limited, sometimes with limited ability to change. Now, when the snow melts in a month, then the bus kind of changes because then I, I can do that. But right now, short of getting off this bus of life and getting onto something else and moving the operation a thousand miles away, I can't just go and build today. It's not, it's not a bad thing, it's just I've got to recognize that I'm on that bus. I'm on that journey of life right now that I can't build right now, but I will be able to soon. Hmm. Hopefully very soon. Let's take a break.